is a pleasure to go with you today on Class Online School and we are happy to have you, our viewers, our listeners on our class for today. If you have not subscribed to our channel, free free, go subscribe, click on that notification bell, that little bell and subscribe. So that anytime we upload a video, you can be notified. If you've not equally watched other of our video classes, go down below, free free, watch other of our classes, share our content so that people out there will get to benefit from what we are doing here. And we have counseling corners on this channel. Feel free, go check out our counseling corner. They will be of benefit. You might gain one or two things from this counseling corner. So please, feel free, check them all out. You will be happy. You have those information. In our class for today, we are going to talk about the basic concept of economies. Though in our previous class, we talk about the meaning of economics, the problems, um, why economics is a science, and some concepts about economics. Today we are going to talk about the basic concept of economics. What are these basic concepts? We have one, want. We have the second one, scarcity. We have the third one, choice. Opportunity cost or recost. Then we'll have another one, scale of preference. This basic economic um, concept are actually very important in our everyday life. Knowing them will help you a lot in making choices in life, in taking preferences in life, and in making use of your resources available on hand to make um, ends meet, even if ends most times does not meet but it will help you to make no more economic decision solve major economic problem as it concerns you as it concerns the organization as it concerns your business and it as it concerns the country at large now let us roll on this study or this um class for today with once now let's try to explain what want in a layman's view is. Want is what we need as humans. You want a particular thing. If this biro is what you desire, you want it. Now, in normal economic term, what is want? Want may be defined as an uh, insatiable desire of human insatiable desire of human that's want because as human being we need a whole lot of things and this want can be both tangible and intangible and this intangible and intangible wants cannot be satisfied at once there is no way on earth that everything we need can come to us on a platter of gold or we can satisfy them all no matter how rich we are. So, when we talk about want, we are talking about the insatiable desire or need by human being to own goods or services. The insatiable desire of human being to own goods or services. That is to say, we desire so many things, be it goods, be it services. And because we need so many, but the, desire, the, the, the uh, resources to fulfill them is not there, we will see how that is a concept in economies. Now let's take for example, as a human, in your scale you might need 100 things at once. Ordinarily, these things cannot be satisfied at once. That is why it is want. They are insatiable. 
Economists use the term insatiable because you cannot take care of all of them at once. Now, how does it apply to us as humans? How can it benefit us in our everyday life, in our businesses? Number one thing, we recognize the fact that as humans, we want so many things. And as human, wanting so many things poses a problem to us because all cannot be satisfied. So whether it's tangible or intangible, it requires that there are a lot of decisions that have to be made. Either you will want it or you might not want it. But then, the basic necessity of human being or necessity of man boils down to three things. Food, clothing, shelter. So in terms of all the ones we have, these ones will always come first. But bear it in mind that want is said to be the insatiable desire or need of man. Which can boil down to um, both tangible and intangible. And you should equally bear in mind under this explanation of what want is that want cannot be satisfied in its totality. That's to say it is insatiable. Now, having known that um, want is insatiable, that leads us to scarcity. But before I go forward, I want to put this here. The need of humans, which is want. Here, we have need. And after this, which is the want, we'll go to scarcity. <laughs> Scarcity. Now let's try to put a general explanation of what scarcity is. If, for example, like in our country, Nigeria, there are times that petroleum, petroleum products like fuel can be very scarce. And so, to get this product to use become a problem. That was on a general note. Now, what is scarcity in economies? When we hear the word scarcity in economies, it has to do with the limited supply of resources. So here we have limited. Limited supply of resources. Remember in number one, we talk about what that human being need almost everything the world can offer and we cannot satisfy them now having seen that that have led us to a problem how do we go about it we come to this one scarcity we need all but the resources on hand is limited limited in supply that is to say, the resources we have on hand, it's very small compared to what we may use to satisfy our wants. So now, if the resources we have is limited and our need is many, that will help us to answer this question of scarcity, which is using the limited resources on hand to satisfy our desire using the resources we have on hand to satisfy our unlimited wants now let's take for example i want to draw a scale of um five i need rent i need uh, clothing i need tv i need radio Then, I need um, sender. Now, this is a scale of five items here. This might cost 2,000. This might cost 20,000. Why this might cost about 10,000? This might cost about 10,000. Let's take it at that. This might cost about 2,000. And this might cost about 1,500. 
Now let's assume that we have 30,000 Naira. Let's assume that we have 30,000 Naira to satisfy this. That is the scarce resources we have in hand. Now, if the scarce resources we have on hand is 30,000, and what we have atomized here is more than that. Let's try to see. This is 20, this is 30, 40, 42, 43,500. If you minus this from this, 43,500. You find out that 13,500 is what we don't have and we want to satisfy our need. So resources to satisfy this number one is limited in supply. It's limited in supply. So that is where scarcity comes in because resources is very scarce. Resources is limited and our wants are unlimited. So the unlimited cannot be satisfied. That is where the scarce resources comes into play. Now, having seen that, how can this help us in our everyday life? We know that we have scarce resources on hand. So no matter how many wants we have or we need, we will have it at the back of our mind that the resources we might have on hand may not be enough to pay for what we need. Remember when we define economics, in our previous class, our very first class, we told you that economics, in, in Lord Robinson's definition, it tells us that it's a relationship between end and scarce means. End and scarce means. That means the resources we have on hand is scarce. That's where scarcity comes into the concept. And that's one reason why Lord Robinson's definition was actually accepted more by most persons. So as individual, how can we use this scarcity problem to help ourselves? Because it's a major problem, it's a basic problem in economies. How can this help us? Now we already know that our resources is scarce. And it means something has to be done and that leads us to choice choice in general has to do with choosing from different alternatives that is to say if you have three choices you have a b c you needed a b c and you can only afford for just a or just b you have to make choice between these three substance or three products so now, in economics, what do we mean when we talk about the word choice? Choice in economies has to do with a system of selecting or choosing out of number of alternatives. Choose from alternatives. to do with you picking from different alternatives. In life, we have different choices to make. In life, we have limited resources and what we want to choose from might be many. Here, economics help us to solve another basic problem in economics, a basic concept in economics, which has to do with choice how to take from different alternatives. Human wants are many, and we cannot satisfy all of them at once, just like we've seen in want, that we cannot satisfy them 100% to meet our desired needs. So if that is the case, and here, a choice is put before you and I to make a choice from alternatives that we have, that is to say, in a number of uh, things, we are going to choose, let's say, in a scale of three, we're going to make choose, choice, uh, we're going to choose one out of these three. So here, 
Choice is very important. You can say that choice arises as a result of um, limited resources that we have on hand. Our wants are many. Our resources are scarce. So from these scarce resources, we have to make choice out of all the many wants that we have here. So the choice we make out of our many wants from these scarce resources is what we refer to as choice. Taking alternatives. Because here we have many. We want to make alternative from what we have there. So that is choice for us. We'll see what choice is. Now, we want to take the next one, which is opportunity cost. But before I take opportunity cost, I want to take scale of preference so that it can follow before opportunity cost. Now, what is scale of preference? Now, what is a scale? A scale. If you've seen a risk scale, you find out that if you put two objects of equal balance, the scale will balance. But if one part of the scale or one side of the scale weighs more, that's to say the object you place on one side of the scale at weigh the other one. That's on an ordinary um, explanation of what a scale is. But then in economics, what do we mean by scale of preference? It is a list. A list of what we want. A list of our wants arranged in order or of need. A scale. That is to say, a list of our wants arranged in order of needs. Now, let me try to make that clearer. We say that scale of preference has to do with arrangement of what we need in the, up, uh, in the order of importance. In the order of importance. That's to say that if, for example, we need five things, food, housing, um, TV, radio, computer. Now, in the arrangement of our needs, let's see that we have one thing on top. That's to say that what we needed will come on top on the scale of what we actually require. And on this scale, we have put this scale in order of importance. Why do I say that it is in order of importance? Why I say that is because in this scale, we put it, the topmost is what we needed most, which is food. The next is housing. The next is TV, radio, and computer. This is our scale of preference. Because we scale it in order of need. We scale it in order of how we want to acquire this. So, what we have here, this list I have just put up, is our scale of preference. Arrange in a way that what we require first come first on the list and the next come following it. So, when you are making scale of preference as an individual, make a scale of one to how many things you need. But it should come in the process of the topmost have to be what you require or needed most as a human. Or what you require as a person. So our food comes first. Our housing follow. Our TV, our radio, our computer. So whichever resources we have, whichever scarce resources we have, the first is what will satisfy first, then followed by the next, and other ones follow. So like I told you, scale of preference has to do with arranging our order of need according to preference, according to um, what we needed most as an individual. That is scale of preference. Now how do we need it as a human? Since we know that resources in our life are scarce and we need a lot of things, 
we want to put it in an item, mind's manner, so that we know which will come first and which to follow. So as humans or as students, as individuals, we want to put our, our expenses or our need in a scale. Pick the one you needed most and put it first. Now, having seen what a scale of preference is, is we want to go to the last on our basic needs today, which is um, opportunity cost or recost. When we talk about opportunity cost, opportunity cost is defined as an expression of cost in item or in terms of foregoing alternative. Opportunity cost has to do with you forgoing something for another. Now let's say this is still our list. We need all of this. Let's say this is going to cost us about 10,000. This will cost us about 10,000 again. This is going to cost us about 10,000. Let's take it on that rounded way. This will cost us about 2,000. And this will cost us about 10,000. And what we have on hand is going to be about 20,000. And we can only satisfy these two. Forgoing the TV, the radio, and the computer become the opportunity cost. Because we are forgoing. We are letting go of it. Why are we letting go of it? Because the resources we have is scarce. And here we've made a choice. And that that choice has led us to making a skill. The skill we've made have helped us to make the cost of what we actually needed. So opportunity costs have to go with foregoing alternative. It is the satisfaction of what wants at the expense of another. It refers to the wants that are left unsatisfied. The ones that are left unsatisfied. So from this example, the TV, the radio, the computer becomes the unsatisfied ones. Unsatisfied one that we let go. So for these three now, we let it go because we didn't have the resources to pay for it all. We didn't have the resources to carry it out. That has helped us to make a decision. Why do we need um, opportunity cost or recourse in our everyday life? We need it because since we need so many things and the resources we have on hand is many, we have to let go of some of those things we need in order to satisfy those which are pressing or which we needed most. So, We've seen the basic concept of economics. These problems. We've seen how the words come about because we are humans, we needed it all at once. But we cannot need it all. So the scarce resources that is on hand cannot allow us to buy them all. The resources we have on hand now will make us to make definite choice what we will let go. What are those things we are going to take and let go of the other ones? And that led to opportunity cost. Costing our item in the item uh, in the way that we'll be able to know what resources, the scarce resources we have on hand to fulfill them. Then the scale of preference is atomizing what we want in the scale of importance, what is needed most. It was a pleasure having you on this class today. Thank you for being part of our class. Until next time. When we dive into our subject area, economics, most properly, see you in our next class. Bye.